Hello and welcome to Balkans Debrief. My name is Ilva Tara and I'm a non-resident senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's Europe Centre. This week, Germany is uh, hosting a summit in the relaunching its Berlin process for the Western Balkans. Several headline agreements have already been announced ahead of the official signing and more might be in the future. With Russia facing setbacks in its war in Ukraine, have regional dynamics shifted uh, to allow for meaningful long-term changes in the region? What will next steps look like and what are the implications for the EU enlargement strategy? To discuss this and more, I'm joined by Milan Nisch, Senior Fellow at the German Council on Foreign Relations. Milan, great to talk to you. Thank you for, for having me. It's great to be with you. Given the announcements uh, from the Berlin Process uh, Summit and agreements to be signed on the 3rd of November, in your view, how big of news this is? I think it could be the best news for the Western Balkans and its uh, EU track um, for the whole year. Uh, it's interesting that this news is not directly related to the war in Ukraine. I expected more from the leaders of the Western Balkans against the backdrop of the war uh, to size the whole strategic situation and uh, to, to do their own push for the uh, strategic anchoring uh, in in Europe. Um, but if if I look back um, from now on to, to, to the beginning of the war in February, there was no big news, except maybe the visit of uh, Montenegro Prime Minister uh, to to Kiev. Uh, so no, it's 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 a, it's a great chance this relaunching or as they say reinvigorating of a Berlin process, together with the uh, EU Western Balkan Summit um, at the beginning of December, to uh, again uh, push uh, the whole the whole story uh, back on track, and we are coming back to more than one year ago at the end of Angela Merkel's era where these agreements that will be signed um, were technically negotiated except the situation between Serbia and Kosovo. And uh, let's not rush too much ahead because these the, the sig signature is one thing, but then these agreements will need to be ratified by all six uh, Western Balkan countries. And then the common regional market can become a reality. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, optimistic about the future of the Berlin process and its impact in the Western Balkans now that we have something working and we have some agreements signed, hopefully? Moderate, moderately optimistic, but you know, why? It's been, it's been long. It's been there are many things we can go on for for the about the shortcomings, um, but I, I I think. Because it's it's a process that has started in 2014, so much has happened, but in a way it contributed to, to to regional understanding, to rapprochement between Belgrade uh, and, and Tirana, and so on and so on. And I think you you see it as a building blocks. So now we can, if the common regional market with all six will take place, you know, big thing is that there is there is a deal on IDE recognition, including between between Serbia and Kosovo. That this will be actually put in writing because the agreement uh, on before first of September was only verbal. Uh, the the recognition of diplomas, so I think it's potentially a really big news for the region and also for the EU because finally EU got its act together. Of course, in Berlin process, only nine can't, nine member states uh, are are involved, uh, but it's with all the it 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 it, it was a very technocratic process with uh, international organization that, that that invested and put money. It, it, it lasted so long, but uh, this is how it works. It's very, uh, very, very sort of fragmented and very incremental, but then you see over time, you see then some, some results. So I'm, I'm moderately optimistic because I think that uh, EU being uh, really a, a dwarf in geopolitics is finally sort of, Putting its uh, its 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 push in the in the, in the region um, in the right way, and Germans are also. I mean, thanks to the fact that they are that the summit is taking place in in, in Berlin, they, they got activated very much in the last few months. Milan, you said that you are moderately optimistic. So, uh, what do you think about the next steps 
in the implementation, especially of the common regional market? It's, it's now about political will of the leaders. And it's also about sort of things moving forward when North Macedonia was unblocked at the very high cost uh, in domestic politics when it was unblocked by, by Bulgaria and therefore also Albania is not, not, not stuck. So if we are moving ahead, um, there is also a winter ahead of us, a winter that will be de- very challenging uh, more for core Europe than for the Western Balkans because of their uh, dependence on Russian gas. You cannot so- decouple from from from. Uh, gas without having infrastructure in place overnight. So this is a challenging time for 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 the EU especially. And I'm mo- once we move forward to the next year uh, with uh, with dynamics created on the on the enlargement to the Western Balkans, then I think uh, we can have we can see the accession process really on a different level. Can we expect uh, common regional market? be happening for the Western Balkan six countries after these agreements? Yes, we can. It's trial and error, but but it will be legally, it will be it will be in place once it's ratified. Uh, and and again, trade is very important. In a strange way, this is good news for Serbia as a as the largest country. It has a trade uh, it, 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 it trades uh, more with the with the others. Uh, it, so it's 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 in their advantage. It has a surplus. It's the only country, I think, in, in, in the region. And, and politically, it's very important for those smaller countries that are always um, very um, careful with Serbia. Uh, first, of, first of all, Kosovo, but also Bosnia and, and Montenegro. So I, I think the right now the, the, the alignment of stars is, is good. Um, and also, let's not sort of blame the Berlin process for the shortcomings, big shortcomings of the EU enlargement. But I, I hope that there can be a, an overlap, a spillover of a positive momentum from the Berlin process to the EU enlargement, which is the big story. Mm-hmm. Uh, will uh, Berlin process in any way support the green transformation or even the energy, the immediate uh, energy crisis that uh, the region is facing and not only due to the war in Ukraine? Yes, I think it is designed this way, the summit uh, in, in Berlin uh, on the 3rd of November, that uh, there will be uh, three priorities or three three, three, three big headlines. Uh, one is the common regional market. The other one is um, um, the green transition. And third is energy security. Also, Ursula von der Leyen, as the president of the commission, will be present. And she will announce a, a support package that uh, she's, I think, introducing uh, in her trip around the region uh, these days. Um, and it's it's very good that I think there is a learning process from the vaccines that that as as the EU was facing a very difficult uh, uh, di- difficult agreement among the twenty seven that they completely forgot uh, the Balkans and the neighborhood and now they are belatedly but still trying uh, I think coming back to to them and uh, the overall package will be significant. Uh, but it's around 500 million they have committed. 500 million. So far. Yeah. You know, so, all, so hopefully always, they learn from the mistake they made during but COVID. But look, I mean, always the region, I, 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 I can imagine Eddie Rama again, you know, doing his, his spiel, which is always like finding, finding the, 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 the bad side on, on, on everything and sort of, uh, going on to, to scold the, the, the EU leaders, which is, which doesn't help. I, I think, uh, now when we have war in Ukraine, uh, when uh, you know we are in, in totally new situation in Europe with European security, to basically say that uh, you know to score the small points, it's that's not the right time, it's not the right moment. I think it 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 actually uh, does not benefit the whole region, uh, nor the region, nor uh, neither the region nor Albania. There were speculations uh, that the EU summit for the Western Balkans after the Berlin uh, process summit will not uh, be uh, uh, holding, but actually uh, they announced yeah. it uh, for 6th of December in Tirana, yeah. in Albania. Uh, what message is that for the enlargement process, in your opinion? It's a good message, but um, I was told that um, Charles Michel, the president of the uh, European Council, was reluctant to call the summit because there was not enough deliverables. There was lack of sort of something that can be highlighted. 
because let's face it, the EU enlargement with the with the six and also with the front runners is stagnating. It's stagnating for various reasons, but one of them, this is something that uh, that that is not popular to say, and uh, the Western Balkan capitals. One of the chief reasons is that because there is lack of progress in the Western Balkan countries, there is no front runner. Uh, it could have been Montenegro after the uh, after uh, the Dritan uh, Abazovic government was formed, but it's it's it's. I think they showed themselves into their feet, and they were supposed to sort of double down on EU integration. Instead, they double down on, on a controversial domestic issue, and they imploded. So there is no front runner knocking on the EU's door, and the biggest hope for the EU Balkans to reinvigorate not the burning process but the EU enlargement comes from Ukraine and for, from the push from the Ukrainian candidate status together with Moldova and the European perspective of Georgia and their complete determination and and also the, fa- the, the fact that this is now for the EU an existential issue and they need to offer something above the regular accession process to Ukraine, which will then mean that also they need to speed up with 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 the uh, Balkan countries as long as they deliver as well. Milan, uh, will the German leadership in the Western Balkans uh, with the Berlin process uh, revitalized, uh, do you think it will transform a momentum even due to some, uh, some rivalries among the EU members for the enlargement process for the region? Yes, uh, I wish so. Um, I would say two things. Number one, it was not clear in Berlin what should happen with the Berlin process and the enlargement after the end of Angela Merkel. I think she also didn't prepare it well, um, the handover. Maybe she was expecting a different chancellor from her own party. But if you remember her trip to the Western Balkans, he, uh, her farewell trip yeah. uh, when she went to Tirana and Belgrade, and she was not very clear what should happen. Uh, without the political agreement with these three on these three on these three accord on these three um, deals, she wanted to hand over, and then a lot of the momentum and time was lost. So, uh, for not only war in Ukraine but also for domestic reasons, Germany lost one year, and now it has got its act together. It has a special envoy for the Western Balkans in the personality of Manuel Zaratsin, who spent a lot of time and I think broke together, help actually all help to get France and all other countries together to, to do a common push with the uh, chancellor and French president directly involved. And now we are seeing, you know, that this, 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 this lot of diplomatic effort is leading to somewhere. Is there a role for the United States in the uh, Berlin process? In, in the process in itself, I don't know. It's up to United States and U.S. Diplomacy State Department to create a role. But of course, there is a role in, in giving support for the whole process in a way that it's, it's in comparison to the Open Balkan Initiative, which had uh, uh, support of U.S. diplomacy. And how do you see the Open Balkan Initiative now that the Berlin process seems to have some product and agreements among the six countries? So it's positive. They are sort of, they're trying to be a front runner, but it's, I'm not sure that Kosovo will ever be part of it, right? So, um, it's good. It, it can be in parallel. There is no way now to, to shoot at each other and, and to compete between these two initiatives. It would be great if open Balkans can sort of, uh, broker the way for the, for the, for the Berlin process. But at the end goal is clear. It should be the EU, uh, the EU membership at, at, at the level that will be realistic and possible. Um, and no other alternatives. And I heard Serbian president saying several times that he doesn't believe that the membership is on, 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 uh, on the offer on the table. And therefore there is a motivation to look for maybe some, you know, m- midterm alternatives like the open Balkan could be to me it was not not a way how to how to how to get Serbia closer to the EU but rather how to create an alternative so from this point I'm more skeptical about the angle of open Balkans and will Germany support open Balkan now that Berlin process is uh, up and running again I think there I'm not an official but I think their answer will be look this is this is this is uh, up and going and and we are creating a common regional market with all six 
which is what the Open Balkan wanted to do with three. And, uh, and the end goal is always, as you said, uh, membership. Will this process help speeding a bit the process? Yes. Yes, of course. Look, European Commission will bring uh, the support on, on energy and so on. So you, it's linked to the to the EU institutions through also the uh, IEB um, and through through the Commission. But what's very important is is bringing more stability and peace uh, to and some kind of end 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 solution to to the Western Balkans. So it's 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 stabilizing the state, uh, the, the 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 six states, bringing more stability and it's anchoring uh, the whole region at the time when when Russia has uh, has has broken the, the European security so and 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 this is this is something on top of NATO uh, and it's it's actually helping the region to to accept each other the states that are there with all the you know the, the all the enmity that is still there uh, as things are Milan, thank you very much for talking to Balkans Debrief uh, and for your moderate optimism, but it's still optimism and I think it's a good signal for the Western Balkans' uh, six countries as well. Thank you for having me and let's hope it will go on the right way. Thank you very much and thank you for watching us. You can follow us on Twitter at AC Europe. Uh, you can watch us on YouTube and listen as a podcast.